So one of the cool things about Bootstrap, like I've said, is that it allows our code to be responsive pretty easily. So for example, if I take my browser window and just kind of shrink it down to mobile phone size, you'll see that at a certain point, this switches over here into a hamburger style menu. That's what we call a hamburger menu. And that's common on mobile devices. And it, you know, when it switches up like that, it's based completely on size. So on mobile devices like iPads and smartphones, it's gonna show up like that. And then as we open it up, onto larger screens, it's going to come back to its normal size with the words that we want, the navigation items showing right there, these two. Cool, so let me just quickly explain what we did here. What we've done is there are really two main components. There's the left side of the nav bar, which is this code, and then the right side. So the right side we just looked at, it's right now we just have two placeholder links in there with the text link for each of them. So as you can see over here, we have link and link over here. And on the left side, we just have a placeholder text for brand. That's kind of where our logo or our company name would go. And the code responsible for that is this division block right here. Okay, and you can kind of make it out and, and see how it all works together. So that's kind of what's going on in this uh, navbar template that we've created from Bootstrap. Now, something that's really important to consider is right now the navbar looks pretty ugly. It's just this default Bootstrap color. There's space between the navbar and our kind of jumbotron section up here, this white space in between the blue. So we need to address that. So I think the best thing to do, and this is where you can just kind of get creative, but the best thing to do, in my opinion, is to make sure that this navbar can stand alone on any web page, because we know typically navbars stay across all the different web pages of your website. Whereas this Jumbotron, we're not necessarily going to keep this on every web page. We just want this to be used as a welcome thing on our home page. So we want the nav bar to look good on its own, but we also want it to look good with the Jumbotron. So we can do that by giving it the same gradient, this kind of blue background. We can apply it to the nav bar up here, and we can get rid of this white space, and it should kind of seamlessly fit right on top of the Jumbotron. So let's do this really quick. Let's go over here, and the first thing we're gonna do is pull up our style sheet, so style.css, and this is where we're kind of overriding the gray default of the Jumbotron. And what I want to do is give this a different name. Instead of using Jumbotron, which is the Twitter kind of uh, default name for these big callouts, we're gonna give it a new name. I'm just gonna call it Gradient Background. Now if I save that and go back and refresh, you'll see we go back to the gray, right? So what we need to do is use this class name and apply it to our Jumbotron. And we can do that just by adding a space and then adding the class name that we just gave it. So that's how classes work, right? So we can come up with whatever class name we want in our CSS file, and then we can use that to target whichever element by adding this class attribute, setting it equal to however many class names we want to give it. So I'm going to save that. Now if we go back and refresh, we're back to where we were. So the good thing about that, though, is that now I can grab this and apply it to any structure and get that same gradient background. So what I'm going to do is go up here. And so navbar default is what gives it this kind of off-white color that we're seeing. Uh, Bootstrap also does navbar inverse. We can just see what that looks like really quick. Let's save it refresh, and you get this kind of darker nav bar. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm just going to wipe this entire thing out to get rid of that color, and instead paste in gradient-bg. So save that, go back and refresh, and there we go. Now we're getting the same kind of background. We will address this text color shortly. There is one other issue here, though. There's a couple. There, right now, there's kind of these rounded corners if you look really closely. I'm kind of zooming in with the Mac zoom feature. 
So we need to take care of these rounded corners. They're on both sides, and we also need to get rid of this white space. So we can do that pretty easily like this. Let's just, just like we did here, we came up with a new name, a new label for the structure, and then gave it its kind of custom rules here. We're going to do the same thing for our nav bar. So we're going to kind of hijack this and add a new name here. We'll just call it main custom nav. You know, you can come up with whatever you want, just something sensible. And I'm going to copy that, save my file, go to the style sheet, and I'm going to go right here and say dot, because it's a class, and say main custom nav. Or I could have just pasted it in, just like that. So make sure you have the dot in front of it. And then we get the curly braces out. And what we're going to do is say we want to get rid of the borders. So the way you do that in CSS is you say border-radius. We're going to set that to 0. So let's save that and go over here and refresh. And there we go. If you can notice, it's really subtle, but those corners are sharp now. There's no rounded corners anymore. And let's go ahead and fix that white space here. The way we can do that, instead of getting rid of that spacing uh, from the nav bar, that's coming from the nav bar. If I right click and say inspect element, okay, and I use my inspector tool, you kind of click this little thing over here and hover over it, I can kind of find the nav bar in my code right here. And there it is. This is our nav bar. And if you notice, there's a yellow color that shows up right here when I hover over it. That tells me that the nav bar is responsible for that margin. And if I scroll down to the bottom here, you kind of get this CSS box model. And you got to be familiar with CSS to know this. And it's telling me there's a 20 pixel margin underneath. There's nothing else all around in terms of margin, but just right there, 20 pixels. So we can get rid of that. So what we're going to do uh, instead of getting rid of it from the nav bar, is have this jumbotron jump up 20 pixels. And we can do that pretty easily by going over here and let's do this. We'll go to our code and in index and we'll give this another kind of custom name here. We'll say um, margin up 20 or we'll say margin negative 20. So copy that and bring it up, save our file, go over to style sheet and just below here, we'll reorganize this later, we'll paste that. So margin dash neg dash 20, get our curly braces out and now we'll set the rule to be margin top, margin dash top, set that to negative 20 pixels. Now let's save that, head over here and refresh. And there we go. Now we have a seamless connection between the nav bar and our Jumbotron.